All right, now we're gonna talk about basic networking equipment. I'm gonna actually roll back and talk a little bit about history of how things develop so you understand where we are at now. So we're gonna talk about basic networking equipment and we know that that's uh, really intermediary devices. So all of what we're gonna talk about now is gonna be intermediary devices. There's a few that I really want you to get down and so that's why uh, we'll go through these and then at the end, I'll summarize the ones that you really need to, mem to remember. So let's start out with a repeater. The repeater is still actually commonly used today. All it does is it takes in information and then sends it back out. It's just repeating it. And so what happens is that we have a meet some sort of media, whether it's fiber or copper or whatever the case may be, it's sending information. It can only send uh, so far. And so what happens is over time, that signal that it's being, that's being sent degrades. And so there are certain media that can carry it further, like fiber can carry it further than copper, but it's still going to have what's called attenuation where it's go that's good, that signal is going to degrade. And so somehow we need to boost that signal back up uh, so that way we can send it a farther distance. That's where a repeater comes in. The information is going to come into a repeater and then that repeater is then going to move it along and send it out the other way, uh, reinvigorate it. It's going to be uh, sent the other way with that stronger signal. And so now we can extend our networks over longer distances because we've got the repeater involved. Now let's talk about what a hub is. A hub is a piece of equipment that was used quite a bit um, a while ago, but now it's not used as much. A hub is a multi-port repeater. So what I mean by that is whatever comes into the, one of the ports on here, it's going to send that back out all other ports. It's going to be repeated out all other ports. So hubs are interesting uh, because what can happen is if two devices talk at the same time, it can't send that information out all of the ports. And so what happens is there's a collision that happens. So within a hub, we consider this a collision domain uh, where things as they're talking can actually collide. It's not the ideal situation. Um, that's why we've moved on to other devices. But hub is going to be a multi-port repeater. Then we have a bridge. A bridge is interesting because what it will do is it will divide those collision domains. And so what we have right here is we have uh, two hubs and we know that whenever information comes through that hub, it gets sent out all other ports. And uh, so what happens is if we have a, just a couple devices and they try to talk at the same time, what's going to happen is there's just going to be a collision. There's an algorithm that figure that that the, both those computers will go through or both those devices will go through and then they'll resend the information. Hopefully there's not a collision again. And, uh, and so things move on. It's not that big of a deal. It happens all the time, except for it is a big deal if you have really large networks with lots of devices on there because there's lots of devices that could be talking at the same time. And then you start coming into a problem where there's lots of collisions that are happening all at the same time. And so what happens with this is we, we install a bridge to separate those collision domains out and get them into two different sections, therefore minimizing how many collisions can happen within, within here. So now what happens is a device will send out information and uh, the, the, uh, this bridge will receive that and determine if it needs to forward that on to the NETS network or not. And the way it knows that is it keeps track of the conversations that are happening and starts keeping track of who's on each side of it. So that way it knows whether it needs to forward it on to the other side or not. And now all the collisions that are going to happen are within that collision domain, splitting up the equipment, minimizing the chances that a collision will happen. Then we have a switch. 
A switch is a multi-port bridge. So we could actually still call this a bridge. And so what happens, what we have here is a diagram. We have several hubs. And what those hubs do, we know that they just take in the information and send it out all other directions. So if a, uh, something gets sent to it, then it will get sent out all other directions. And so it's just forwarding it everywhere. Uh, and we know that collisions can happen within a hub uh, because if two devices talk at the same time, we have a collision. And so we need to separate that, net that network out so we have bridges that do exactly that. When a device talks on a network, that switch or bridge is going to learn who's talking and put it into its MAC address table. And so it's going to keep track who is connected to this port, who is connected to this port, who is connected to this port, and starts tracking all that communication that's happening and where it's coming from. So that way, when it gets information, it can decide I need to forward this or I don't need to forward this on to these other networks. And so that is what a switch does or a bridge. So that brings us up to date of what our networks look like now. Our networks look like what you're seeing here uh, on the diagram where we usually just have switches within our network. So the thing is with that is that at hubs, we know that there's problems with collisions uh, but the one reason why we used them in the past is because they were much cheaper than switches. Switches were very expensive. And so you did a lot of your communication through hubs, but then at the core, you would have a switch. Uh, the other problem with this is when devices send out information, they get sent to a lot of devices. And this is a security issue. And so when we replace everything with just uh, switches and have just switches communicating with our network, not only do we separate out these collision domains, but when a device sends information, it's not gonna be sent to everyone and therefore we have better security. So we pretty much just use switches now. There are times when we uh, will use a hub, um, possibly just to uh, put a security device on there so that a, that security device can listen to uh, the traffic and understand what's happening with the traffic and spot issues with the traffic. Uh, although a lot of times we'll actually do something called port forwarding on the switch and use that instead. So know that we now use, primarily we use switches and, um, and switches are much more cost effective and that will break apart these collision domains, uh, create more security and all this is happening on the layer two and we'll talk more about layer two and layer three in a little bit. So then let's talk about a gateway. Uh, so gateway is going to separate out different protocols and be a transition point for different protocols. So in this example right here, uh, we've got a network over here. Perhaps it talks some sort of, um, some sort of protocol. Uh, and over here, it talks a different protocol. Maybe the good example is I used to manage uh, networks like Apple Talk um, who, that didn't always talk the same language as the rest of the networks. And so the communication needs to be somehow facilitated where it makes a transition from uh, one protocol to another. Now, gateways are often associated with voice, uh, and so we'll see a lot of voice transitions if you have some sort of Ethernet-based uh, VoIP connection, and then we have a gateway that um, that then transfers that into a, a voice connection. So gateways are the intermediary where they are transitioning the product from one protocol to another protocol. Gateways are also our transition to the outside world. So here we have a network that we have right here. And then this device right here is a gateway that somehow we make a connection to the internet. So that's my uh, pathetic attempt at a cloud. Um, but so now we have a, a gateway that gets out to the internet or to, um, once again, some, maybe some sort of voice network. Uh, and so there's, that's another example of a gateway and often it's right at the edge of our network. Now let's talk about a router. Uh, you'll see that we have actually four routers on this diagram right here. And what they're doing is they're interconnecting different networks. So we've got three networks that have end devices on them right here. 
And so the routers are going to interconnect these different end device networks. And so uh, their job is to forward information. So when information comes to it, it will make a determination on what's the next best uh, route to go or the next best hop. We'll talk about that terminal terminology later, but it's gonna determine what the next best action to forward that, uh, that packet on and then make a decision and then send it on that way to get to its destination. So a router, the job of a router is to forward packets, to forward, forward it on, make a determination where it needs to go and forward that packet on. So let's do a real quick summary of what we've learned to already, or at least the important equipment. We've got bridges or switches, routers, and gateways. And so in this diagram right here, we've got bridges, and those bridges are really happen at a layer two. We're gonna be talking a lot more about layer two and what's happening at that level, but it's gonna be that local traffic, how it gets information and forwards that information from one device to another at a local level. Uh, then what we have here is we have uh, our routers in between that's going to help facilitate transferring those packets from one location to another. So that's going more on a global scale of routing information. How does it route information on, uh, on a much larger scale? And that's happening at a layer three and a layer four. And then finally, we have gateways, which are translating protocols from one uh, protocol to another. And so that can happen at a layer five. And so in within this example right here, these could be gateways right here. Um, and so, uh, and then these are not gateways because they're not really translating different protocols. So we see where a router could be a gateway, but it's not always a gateway. A router is not always a gateway. Let's take another look at how you could actually have multiple gateways on a network. So here we have a network and it has a phone system and then also has regular uh, laptops and uh, regular computers that are connecting into it as well. So this is a, a VoIP phone system, a voice over IP phone system, and it connects into the same devices that the rest of your networked equipment connects into also. But when it connects to the phone company, it could be transitioning into some other type of language, some sort of SIP line or some other uh, type of line. And so it has a different gateway for the communication of the voice network. And this is where I say a lot of times we associate gateways with like voice communication and um, telephony. And so here's our gateway to talk to the phone system. And then we have possibly another gateway that talks to the internet or connects us to the internet. Now let's talk about default gateways. Default gateways is really not a piece of hardware. It's not a device that sits on your network. Uh, default gateways are not a service that that uh, you know a server would be hosting. A default gateway is a setting. A default gateway is set up on your end devices, and it's what the end device will determine is this something that I know where to send this to or is it on my local network and I can just send it directly to them or is it somewhere outside where I'm not, I really don't know where it's supposed to go. Well, then it ha looks at its setting for its default gateway and then forwards that information onto the default gateway so the default gateway can handle that and get it to sent in the proper direction. So default gateway is set on your end devices so that way, if it doesn't know what to do with information, it will send it to the default gateway and the default gateway will hopefully then handle it and send it in the direction that it needs to go. So if you need for your network to work at home, you need switches and you probably have some sort of Wi-Fi at home and you need routers and you need a modem and you need all sorts of different components to make this communication happen. Why are you not seeing multiple devices at home? Or I'm assuming that there are some people that do have multiple devices at home, but for a lot of people, they just have a single device that connects them to the internet. And the answer is, is because a lot of times we wrap a lot of these elements all together into 
uh, one device. And so that's where your wireless routers come in. It's known by many different names, but we're just gonna call it a wireless router for now. And within there, you have your ethernet switch. You'll have multiple ports and that's your switches, your switch that's on there or your bridge that's on there. You'll have your router, it performs routing functionality. You'll have your access point for wireless. You'll have your modem and you'll have your firewall. And it's all wrapped up into a single piece of equipment. So we do see that where a lot of times this, uh, a lot of these different components get wrapped up into one package. So what a lot of businesses will have is they'll have a switch that connects all their end devices. Then they'll have some sort of router that's going to route that information that's going to divide their network up from the rest of the networks. Hey, like my videos? If you could hit that like button, that really helps me out. Um, so you'll see separate pieces of equipment in there to facilitate different needs. But uh, another thing that will happen in businesses is that you will get a what's called a layer three switch. A layer three switch uh, is connects all of your end devices, but it also has some layer three functionality. So built into this layer three switch is some layer three functionality or some routing capabilities. So what we have here is we have an example of a layer three switch and a layer two switch. So layer th two switches is, would be just a standard bridge or a standard switch versus a layer three will have built-in router functionality and you can choose whether to use that or not with these layer three switches all right so just a summary we have switches routers and gateways and so switches will happen in these local areas uh, that will divide this network up so local communication can happen. And then we will have routers. Routers are going to uh, forward your packets on um, from a layer three perspective and uh, switches work on a layer two. And then finally we have gateways. Uh, many times your router functions as a gateway and this can happen up to a layer five as it translates different protocols from one protocol to another.